Hey dudes, how's it going? Uh, my name is CD Development. Uh, I'm sure as you notice, I have a ridiculously annoying and nasally voice, so if you can actually stand that, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed, because I'm going to be using this new channel to post some of my own projects and just some content related to game development in general. But anyways, I wanted to get into it today because today's video is going to be about a new engine that I just developed. Um, if you don't know, I'm a first-person shooter developer by heart. And this engine is codenamed Shockwave. It's easily my best work so far. So I thought I'd get into it and kind of showcase it and show you how it's going so far. It's still in development, a little unfinished. So I will be releasing some videos in the future as well about just kind of improvements and updates on the engine. But uh, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the animation improvements on this engine compared to some of the older engines. So to start, the walking animations are definitely a lot smoother and a lot more fluid. A lot of the movement animations this time are based around some math loops and also some mocap. So they're very smooth and very fluid and human-like, which I'm really happy and pleased with. The sprinting animation this time around is also another loop, so it's a lot easier to run other animations on top of sprinting. There's also been improvements to the grenade throwing animations, which uh, I definitely think was necessary. There's also full legacy support for all of my old animations, and these animations even run while you're aiming down sights or sprinting as well. It's pretty smooth, so I'm very happy with that as well. And you can also throw grenades while sprinting. And of course, there's classic mantling animations. All right, let's talk visuals. I'm sure you saw earlier the explosion effects have been improved. Uh, the muzzle flashes are also really nice looking now, and there's even ejecting shells out the side of every weapon. Some reticle improvements are that the lenses are now made of the glass material. This makes it so the muzzle flash is a lot less distracting while you're actually aiming down sights. This also has the added benefit of adding some magnification and optical refraction to some of the lenses, which is actually really hard to achieve through Roblox, but I'm actually very happy that I was able to get that working well. Visual effects aside, let's talk some of the new mechanics that you'll see in the new engine. There is now mounting, both on left, right, and vertical walls. The camera is limited to how far you can move while mounted up, but it does lower your recoil, so there's always that added benefit. And you're also a little bit hidden behind the object you're mounting up on. There was a problem in the older engines where you could stick the barrel of your gun through walls, so we fixed that if you get too close, your character will put the gun off to the side. There's also crouching and proning, as is necessary. Now sometimes a ledge might be too far down for you to mount on, but if you just look far down enough, then it'll prompt you and you can mount up on it. You can also approach crouched and that'll make it a lot easier. And like I said earlier, the recoil is minimized while you're mounted up on something. There are now two different sprinting modes. There's a normal sprint, and there's also this double sprint mode. The animations in grenade throwing can't be done during a double sprint. It'll take you back to normal sprint if you do that. From the later versions of the engines, the hybrid and thermal sight reticles are also back in this new engine. And one of the biggest things that'll be hard to get used to is there is now bullet travel time and proper bullet drop over distance. The amount of travel time and drop changes depending on the weapon you're using and the rounds it fires. So here with a 1911, it's a little bit hard to reach those targets. With a Deagle, it's also just pretty difficult. But with an M16, since the bullets are light and the velocity is high, there's almost no drop at this range. The same can go for a 5.7. You know, it's a very light projectile, doesn't drop as much. And another interesting thing about the RPG being a two-stage projectile, you can see that while it's flying under rocket power, it's flying, you know, just fine. But the second the rocket runs out, then it starts to drop like a stone. Alright, now into some of the nerdy fun stuff. 
So let's get technical. So in the top left there, you actually see information that this is actually information that the engine is keeping track of. So it's keeping track of the weight, the barrel length, everything. This is what determines the amount of damage weapons do, the amount of recoil they have, everything. And one really cool thing you're going to notice here is it takes into account the weight of the ammunition. So as you dump more rounds, your gun's going to get lighter. And of course, the lighter the weapon gets, the more recoil you're going to experience. And the uh, weight of the gun is actually not even really stored anywhere. It's determined just by the gun model itself. So like this gun model is actually made out of the plastic material with a couple of metal parts in it and everything. And that is actually making it a lot lighter. So it is experiencing more recoil than say the uh, AK would or anything like that just because the gun's made of pretty much pure plastic. And so here is a better example. Here's like an LMG. It's going to be a lot heavier, but it's also firing 5.56, which in general isn't a lot of recoil anyways. So you can see that the recoil on this LMG is actually pretty low. You can see that weight changing as the uh, ammo count changes. And uh, another thing you'll also notice is that these stats, I didn't actually specifically tweak any of the gun models yet to match their real life counterparts, but these stats are pretty close to how much they actually weigh and how long they actually are. So that's always cool. The recoil on every gun is actually determined by the ballistic energy stat down there. That determines how much energy that the ammunition is dumping into the target. But that also, uh, using Newton's third law, determines how much energy it takes to actually move the bullet at that velocity. So you can see as you go through different kind of cartridges and different kind of weapons, that statistic actually changes. Okay, and so now I'm actually going to turn on trails, which is going to help us see the exact path of the bullet. And one thing you're going to notice about these trails is the color change. Uh, from white to orange is the muzzle velocity down to the speed of sound, and then from orange to red is the speed of sound down to zero. So you can see here the uh, AK-74 firing 545 went through about six pallets of wood. Those are about maybe an inch or two in length, but the uh, 74U with its shorter barrel, despite the fact that it's firing the same cartridge, is actually going to go into only five. Now that test was a little unfair because we were just a little bit further back, so I'm going to try and get right up close. That's a lot more even, and you'll still see that it actually only goes through about five pellets of wood, as opposed to the six that the actual AK actually went through. I say actual AK, they are both AKs, but one of them's just shorter. So here you have a 45 ACP. This thing's going to have a lot more drag and be moving slower, so it actually only goes in... Well, it actually went in five, so all right. But it also did have a lot more momentum behind it, so I guess it could carry through the wood. A 5.7 here. Uh, it's not going to go through very far. It's a very light projectile. doesn't have a lot of momentum and doesn't start out going too fast anyways. Uh, you can tell by just looking at the muzzle velocity there. 30-06. This is a powerful rifle cartridge. This is going to go pretty far, I think. It's very heavy, yes. It's very heavy, very fast. Goes almost all the way through them, actually. Left about, looks like three pallets there. Okay, and here we actually have our 50 cal. This thing's a very light 50 cal with a short barrel, so the recoil is pretty insane. But being a 50 BMG, it uh, did actually keep on going. It slowed down quite a bit there, but it did get all the way through the wood, so that's pretty neat. And of course, if you look, as it doesn't go through wood, you know, it's going to move a lot faster and drop a lot slower. Because there's not too much to slow it down except for the air. For these calculations, I did actually uh, pay attention to the realistic drag coefficients and the densities of the material. So concrete being more dense than wood, uh, you'll find that the bullet actually doesn't go through as much concrete. So there's a pretty big drastic difference there. And of course going through steel. Uh, let's go ahead and do the thin plates first. 
So you'll see that this is actually realistic to how it would actually work if you space them out. It's going to go through more material, but if it's all in one big block there, you'll see that it does actually stop inside the steel. Another thing to note that you can't really tell since the trails are on, but the bigger the cartridge, the bigger the bullet hole. So those 50 caliber rounds are actually leaving pretty large holes compared to this other round. Now here's another cool thing, is the uh, damage is actually calculated based on the amount of flesh the bullet goes through and how much energy it dumps into the person. So if you shoot someone straight on, it goes straight through them, did about 30 damage, it's a 45 ACP, so okay. But if you actually shoot somebody long ways and you try to get the bullet to go through a lot more flesh and dump a lot more energy into the target, see it actually did more. Now it still went all the way through, so it still had some energy left by the time it hit the other side. But this actually means that the uh, best way to shoot somebody using this engine to do the most damage would actually be going straight through the side like this. So you see it went through their arms and their torso and it did 53 damage there. It is only a 45 ACP, so it's not going to do too much. You know, got to make sure it's fair, being that it's a video game. But uh, that is actually how it would work realistically. And here's another side effect of that. If you shoot straight through somebody's head, 47 damage keeps on going okay. But if you try, and you just try to barely graze their head here, and try that. So yeah, you can see just barely grazing them, giving them a nice little nose job there. That only did 10 damage, because it basically uh, basically gave them a scratch as opposed to actually hitting them. And you can also see that the, uh, despite the fact that it did only really give them a scratch, it did slow the bullet down as compared to the one that just kept straight on going. So you can see here, the, uh, the one that didn't hit the person still went a little bit farther. And of course, this mechanic works on all body parts, so including legs. If you just try to graze the leg here, oh, only did one damage because it just barely grazed him. Now this gun shoots 32 ACP, so it's not going to do too much, but you'll notice that this effect doesn't work if it stops in the torso. If it stops in the torso when you're shooting straight on, shooting the long ways through the torso isn't going to change it because it's dumping the same amount of energy into the torso every time. It's not like it's going further through flesh. It's literally just dumping the same amount because the flesh actually stopped it. And so I mentioned earlier the same effect with the RPG, but now that we have trails on, you can actually see it a lot better. Flies along just fine until the rocket runs out, and then it drops like a rock. So you can actually see that it started out, the trail being white, meaning it was at the muzzle velocity, and going to orange, meaning it's hitting the speed of sound. And then right about here, the rocket runs out, so now it's just kind of being carried by its own momentum. It's experiencing atmospheric drag and gravity and everything, so it slows down and drops a lot. And then it explodes right there. Okay, and now lastly, I wanted to touch on the slow motion variable. I included a feature in the engine that would allow the whole engine, literally all the physics calculations and everything, to go into a slow motion mode. So I can actually set this speed and how all these animations are played and everything. And this really helps us see kind of what's going on. So one thing you'll notice, of course, is that the... Uh, bullets are actually, the ejecting shells are physically simulated. They also make a sound depending on how big the shell was and what material it hit and everything. And another really neat thing, which was a small detail that I added. So in older FPS engines that I've made, the bolt going back and forth was literally, it was just an animation, right? So you'd shoot, and then it would also play this animation of the bolt going back and forth. In this engine, the bolt actually going back and forth is what chambers are around. They're directly connected. So if the bolt is back, you literally cannot fire under any circumstances whatsoever. The bolt has to return home into battery completely before the next round is fired. So, yeah, it's not like it's waiting for the fire rate, it's literally the bolt has to return home before it can fire again. 
okay so that concludes this video on the new features and different improvements you can see on the surface of this new engine and in future videos i'll probably go over more of the technical development aspect behind it you know how easy it is to add weapons and things like uh, performance improvements over older engines and all that but um if you're interested in that content go ahead and leave a like and uh Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more videos here in the future. And with that being said, you have a wonderful rest of your day.